All right, so let's start with the big story that we are tracking on Vyond. This is how China's coronavirus outbreak is showing no signs of abating. And the latest news that has come in, the death toll has now risen to 811, surpassing the fatalities that were observed in the SARS outbreak of 2002-2003. The number of confirmed cases has now reached a whopping 37,198 with about 2,600 new cases being reported in just the last 24 hours. And to give us a sense of what is playing out within China, we are joined in by our correspondent Patrick Falk. Now, good afternoon to you, Patrick. You know, despite the best efforts by the Chinese administration, the number of infections, it appears, just does not seem to come under control. The death toll has now gone well beyond what was witnessed during SARS. Yeah, well, of course, everyone's talking about this uh, figure, 813, that uh, it's uh, now equaled uh, the number of cases of uh, deaths in SARS in 2000, 2003. And no doubt it's going to blow well past that mask, mask, uh, mark. But, you know, there is a silver lining. One of the figures that people aren't talking about quite so much is that one you just mentioned a moment ago, 2,600 cases in the last 24 hours. That's actually quite a big drop from the mm -hmm. previous day by about few hundred, a few hundred. And that is a possible sign that cases of infections are slowing down. The WHO says it's a little bit too early to say whether or not this is a sustained decline, but did also say that this is perhaps uh, attributable to China's containment efforts. At the same time, though, authorities in China are contending with a, another outbreak of sorts. That is uh, one that's related to political instability. People in China are still feeling very raw indeed over the death of Dr. Li Wenliang. He's the, uh, one of the doctors, I should say, uh, who first tried to warn authorities about the dangers of this disease. And he himself, as we know, succumbed uh, to the virus. And uh, as far as we understand, according to reports, President Xi Jinping has actually sent one of his protégés uh, to Wu uh, we are told, according to some experts, that he may be there to coordinate efforts. But given that he is a, a strategist known for maintaining stability, one has to imagine that he is there to try and settle people and prevent this from becoming a wider political uh, crisis for the Communist Party. Absolutely, indeed. There will be a sort of a political crisis that uh, Xi Jinping will be looking at. We'll discuss that in just a minute. But, but in terms of trying to contain this, this viral outbreak, because there are cities that have been placed under quarantine, if at all that is possible to rule that, uh, there are an estimated about 6 million people who are in a state of lockdown. But that has not prevented the infection from spreading further. Uh, you know, when medical experts sit down and put their heads together at this point of time, is, is there any kind of hope at all that the spread of infection will be brought under control? Well, look, clinical uh, tests are underway to see if remdesivir, the uh, antiviral drug, is effective. We won't know for a little bit of time. And the focus very much on uh, seeing whether that drug works rather than uh, getting the license for it. Uh, but also the WHO has been uh, given approval, if you like, after they requested China to send its experts into Wuhan to assess the situation. But you also mentioned some of the drastic measures that China is taking to isolate people. These are people that have may not be showing any symptoms, but simply came into contact with uh, other people that are infected. So it gives you an indication of how desperate the situation is. Uh, as far as we understand also, China has ramped up the procurement of all sorts of medical supplies. Uh, we are told that it is about 20 percent short of uh, not just things like goggles and masks and protective gear, but also uh, drugs to treat the illness and also testing kits. Uh, mm -hmm. And in fact, the Communist Party head uh, of Hubei has ordered that uh, all people that require testing be tested within the next two days because they want to divert their resources into uh, looking after the people that are actually sick. So if those, if those measures are successful, perhaps there will be a little bit of a corner that that uh, China can turn. Absolutely, indeed. And also considering the fact that the city of Wuhan, which is said to be about the size of London, with its population being about 11 million people, that has been in a state of lockdown since the 23rd of January. 
A uh, lot of people who have in fact put out their videos talking about their plight in this city that's been under lockdown. They've said that their rations are running low, not enough medical supplies are available. You know, how is China trying to work through supplying rations and other basic essential necessities for the people in the city in a lockdown? Well, it's interesting because President Xi Jinping declared this a people's war, uh, really stirring some nationalistic sentiment in, uh, to, to an extent. Uh, and, you know, in reality, this is a military operation. We've got the military uh, running uh, the medical operations. As we know, they are running the two purpose-built medical facilities that have been set up for coronavirus patients. They've also got the army in charge of delivering supplies like food and other medical supplies uh, into Wuhan City and other parts of Hubei as well. As we know, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of roads have been locked down altogether. So the army has been uh, put in charge of bringing food and other goods to other people uh, uh, as well. Uh, but nevertheless, you know, I think the situation is still very, very severe and, uh, and worth noting as well that China has ordered uh, producers, food producers, to uh, ramp up production and send in hundreds of tons of things like vegetables into, into Wuhan and other places in Hubei to, to feed people simply. Absolutely indeed. And also China over the last few decades has emerged as the factory of the world, supplying a lot of uh, the goods that are manufactured there. Uh, we're given to understand that there are several factories that have suspended their operations in China. How is all of this likely to have an impact, a, an impact on business within China and indeed globally? Well, one of the reasons why China is so frustrated about some of these travel restrictions uh, is because it is going to have an effect simply on business people. Uh, uh, that's one way it's uh, Im impacting the economy. People need to travel around to do business, but also the su uh, supply chains. Uh, we already know of factories that are closing down and uh, there are uh, evidently going to be wider supply chain disruptions. And we don't know how long this is going to last for. Anything that anyone predicts at this moment is... Uh, uh, it's difficult to really say whether or not it's accurate because we don't know at this point enough about the disease still to be able to determine how long all of this is going to last. Uh, some experts have suggested that China will be able to get all this under control uh, by the end of March and Standard & Poor's has also uh, revised downwards its forecast for growth in China in 2020 to 5% from 5.7%. But as I say, these are all predictions and still very hard to say right. just how accurate this is all going to be. Uh, that said, though, a, a lot of people have said that this is temporary uh, and they do expect China's economy to be able to rebound beyond the first quarter of this year. Absolutely indeed. And ever since Xi Jinping took charge of China in the year 2012, it is being said that the outbreak of the novel coronavirus is the biggest challenge that he has faced. How damaging has this been for him politically? Well, I think it's true to say that this is an absolutely enormous uh, challenge. And so one of the things that's happening right now is uh, the, this concern about political unrest, particularly after the death of uh, Dr. Li Wenliang that we just spoke about. And people have been demanding more freedom of speech. Ironically, censors are out blocking these demands for more freedom of speech. A lot of people believe that is one of the reasons why this outbreak has been as bad as it's become. And so one of the things they're other are also demanding is that they are calling for authorities and officials to clarify what they mean by the term rumors, typically uh, something, uh, a term that is used by authorities uh, to reprimand people. And as we know, Dr. Li Wanliang was reprimanded by police for spreading rumors. And uh, this is something that has stirred emotions and caused a lot of uh, anger in, in China. So it, it, as, however long the outbreak lasts, there are going to be uh, political repercussions that the party is going to have to deal with. As far as we understand, they've also sent in an investigative team uh, from the central government's anti-corruption right unit and they're going to be looking into how this all turned out the way that it did. Absolutely. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Patrick Falk, for joining us from Hong Kong and giving us insights in terms of how all of this is, of course, playing out there in China. We'll, of course, be tracking this story very, very closely. But meanwhile, there are, of course, speculations that are doing the rounds that China could be 
could be using the coronavirus as a biological weapon and has so far been reaching it as even and this is an issue that's even in fact been raised in the US Congress. Republican Senator Tom Cotton claimed that coronavirus may have originated from a laboratory within Wuhan. This of course is what he is claiming. First listen in to what the senator had to say. China is still lying about all of this. They've been lying about it from the very beginning and you don't need their history of lying about SARS in 2003, though it is relevant here, you just have to see what's happened over the last two months. We now know that the first case manifested no later than, no later than December 1, even though China didn't reveal it to the WHO until a month later on December 31st, when they continued to hide it from their own citizens. And they continued to say that it had been contained inside Wuhan. Today, it is in every single province in China. They also claimed for almost two months until earlier this week that it had originated in a seafood market in Wuhan, that locals had contracted it from animals in, say, bat soup or snake tartare. That is not the case. The Lancet published a study last weekend demonstrating that of the original 40 cases, 14 of them had no contact with the seafood market, including patient zero. As one epidemiologist said, that virus went into the seafood market before it came out of the seafood market. We still don't know where it originated. Could have been another seafood market. Could have been a farm. Could have been a food processing company. I would note that China, or that Wuhan also has China's only biosafety level four super laboratory that works with the world's most deadly pathogens to include, yes, coronavirus. Now, look at China's own actions. They have quarantined 60 million people, 60 million, more than the entire population of our West Coast. They've shut down schools indefinitely. Classes canceled nationwide indefinitely. Hong Kong, a part of China, 